Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin. I'm a Biblical Studies and Theology major at Tyndale University with a minor in Youth Ministry. This is my first time preaching, and although you may not recognize me, I've been around Southridge my entire life, and I'm really excited to share with you this morning. Has there ever been a time where you have experienced deep pain and grief that doesn't seem to go away and wondered where God was or felt forgotten by Him? I know I have, and I think most of us have. So good news, you're in good company with everyone in the room and with the writers of the Psalms. Lament Psalms give us a way to connect with God through these big emotions. Psalm 42 and 43 are one example of a lament Psalm, and together they can be viewed as a single Psalm. There's a lot of connected language, repeated themes and words, and there is no Psalm title in Psalm 43. Reading through the rest of the book of the Psalms, we can see that many Psalms have Psalm titles. Psalm 42 has the title, To the Choir Master, a Masculine of the Sons of Korah. Psalm 43 does not have a title, and therefore it can be seen to share the Psalm title as Psalm 42. Reading Psalm 42 and 43 together as one Psalm help us as readers get a fuller picture of what the message is for us. Repetition through scripture is important to notice. Things are repeated for a reason, and looking at repetition in Psalm 42 and 43 help us see key themes and emphasis. The refrain is repeated three times throughout these psalms. The same words are said in 42.5 and 11 and 43.5, which reads, Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you turmoil within me? Hope in God, for again I shall praise him, my salvation and my God. The refrain emphasizes how the psalmist is struggling, deeply in pain, and yet knows the truth of who God is and how he can rely on God, even when things are challenging. There is also a repeated theme of praise throughout these psalms. The psalmist continually speaks about how he longs to be back at the temple, praising God in community. In Psalm 42.4, the psalmist writes, These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Here and in the verses of the refrain, the psalmist reminds themselves of the beauty of praising God and the goodness that comes from being in community and praising. The psalmist clings to this memory and picture of hope. This image of the temple and praising God is hopeful for the psalmist because of their attachment to the temple. For people in Bible times before Jesus came, the temple is where God's presence was. There was significance to being in the temple because that is where God was said to dwell. Being separated from the temple for the psalmist is like being far away from God's presence. They are likely separated from the temple because of being in exile. We can see the psalmist longing for God in verses 1 and 2 as they express their deep need for God. They write, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go to meet with God? They also make it clear that they're away from the temple by asking where can they go to be in his presence. But we also see in 42.4 and 43.3 a direct reference to the house of God and the place where God dwells. In chapter 42, verses 3, 6, and 9, and 42, ver 43, verse 2, we can feel the psalmist's deep agony and pain as he writes. These verses read, My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon from Mount Mizar. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? You are God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? The psalmist clearly feels alone and are facing adversity and is finding it really challenging to be resilient and positive. They are using language that conveys a sense of being lost and uncertain about how to go on next. They have been crying so much that their tears might as well be sustaining them. The psalmist feels forgotten and rejected by God, like they are no longer in his sight. Another theme to be aware of is who the psalmist is speaking to as he writes. 
It seems clear that the psalmist is alone, and for all of Psalm 42, they are only speaking to themselves. They are going over the story of their circumstances, however long it may have been going on, and focusing on the pain they're in and all the bad things that have happened to them. They are stuck in the cycle of seeing the bad. But in Psalm 43, there is a shift. The psalmist begins to directly address God. They plead with God to vindicate them in verse 1, saying, Vindicate me, my God, and plead my cause against an unfaithful nation. Rescue me from those who are deceitful and wicked. In verse 3, they make a really important change. They ask for God's guidance, saying, Send me your light and faithful care. Let them lead me. Let me bring let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. The psalmist has surrendered their life to God and has decided that although the pain is incredibly difficult, they need God to help them. They can't do it alone. In Psalm 43, 4, the psalmist writes, Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the lyre, O God, my God. The word of joy is a, is a small but impactful word to notice. In today's society, I believe that we often think of joy as happiness and that it's impossible to have happiness while being in such a season of suffering. But digging deeper into the true meaning of joy, we learn that joy is actually an outcome of life and living life with God. Joy is a full body experience that is possible to have in the difficult times because it does not come from our circumstances, but it comes from recognizing who God is and his faithfulness. The psalmist is trying to actively remember the joy they felt while going to the temple and to be in God's presence and with his people. They are trying to seek out joy in the current moment, Finding joy in God through praising Him and building a relationship with Him can make walking through the challenges easier. The psalmist goes on a journey as they lament. Nothing seems to be going right for the psalmist. I imagine it, they feel that one thing after the next after the next just keeps going wrong. They are far from God's presence. They are alone and their enemies surround them and spread negativity all about. As we talked about, they start the journey on their own, but from looking at Psalm 42, we quickly learn that this doesn't get them anywhere. When they begin to involve God in their lamenting, they start to make progress in working through their feelings and not being stuck in the heaviness of their grief. Memory is a big factor throughout this psalm. The psalmist often reflects on when life was going well, but throughout Psalm 42, rather than being encouraged by God's faithfulness and remembering how they were close to God before, the psalmist gets stuck on how they are no longer in that intimate space with God. I think it's also significant to look at the type of help the psalmist asks for. As we read in Psalm 43, 4, they ask for God's light and faithful truth in the ESV, or in the NIV, it says God's light and faithful care. Through this request, the psalmist has actively surrendered their life to God and their emotions to God. Light and truth communicate the psalmist's desire for hope, something to keep them going and looking forward, and for God's authentic character, justice and sovereignty to become a reality in their life. To summarize and go over the key pieces that we've covered, we learn that the psalmist is experiencing grief from being far away from God's presence and the temple. They are crying out in need of God, but are so overwhelmed and lost in their circumstances, they forget to turn to God who is waiting with his arms wide open. They then shift from speaking to themselves to speaking directly to God, telling them their thoughts, feelings, and emotions, being brutally honest and vulnerable with God and not holding anything back. As they begin to seek God, they are further comforted and provided with a safe space to grieve. God is their father. He is personal and he is actively involved in their life. And the psalmist experiences this firsthand in Psalm 43. How can we learn from the psalmist and find joy in who God is and draw near to him to experience his love and comfort in raw ways? 
One of the biggest things we can learn from Psalm 42 and 43 is that we can learn to find joy while crying out to God in deep pain and agony. One of th- this is a side of God we only experience on earth because in heaven there won't be any pain. It isn't easy. I myself struggle with wanting to wallow in the feelings of despair and loneliness because I don't feel like I have the power and energy to search for the good but it's helpful and it's what starts us on the road to healing. Psalm 42 and 43 are just one example of a lament psalm. All lament psalms can give us words to say to God when we don't feel like we have any. Through the psalms, we learn that God wants to relate to us in these ways and that he can handle the big emotions that we have no matter what they are. Lament psalms also give us permission to grieve with God being honest and open about how we're feeling. Not only does the psalmist demonstrate this, but Jesus also demonstrates this to us in Matthew 26, 38 to 39, where it says, Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, May this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus prayed this prayer three times in the Garden of Gethsemane, just hours before his death. Jesus experienced many of the same emotions that we do, and he understands the battle of wanting to seek God and do his will while also drowning in the pain of suffering. We can have confidence to go to God with the things that we are dealing with and the emotions that we have because Jesus did the same and the psalmist also demonstrate this to us in the same way. Feeling our emotions and allowing ourselves to grieve is quite countercultural. Society often teaches us to not feel the big hard emotions or that other suffering is worse than ours so we can't have certain feelings or we don't have a right to feel a certain way because others have it worse than we do. I've had these thoughts myself way more times than I can count. Up until about two and a half years ago, I didn't process any of the negative emotions that I have. I only ever allowed myself to be happy, shoving everything else down until I couldn't keep it in anymore and I broke. But circumstances in our lives are allowed to be difficult. We can't compare our sufferings. We are also often shown that we need to do things alone, that these negative emotions shouldn't be shown to anyone else and need to be dealt with behind closed doors because they're too much for other people to handle. But the Lament Psalms encourage us to go to God with the things we're feeling and to bring him into our grief and suffering. The psalmist also longed for his community, to have someone to share in his pain, to walk alongside him and to be a peaceful, comforting presence, even if they couldn't fix anything. We are not expected to go through life alone and we are not expected to shove down our feelings that are valid and real. We are allowed to grieve and we are invited into the beautiful opportunity of being comforted by our loving God whose heart breaks with us. So how do we lament? How do we work with the emotions and the way God has wired each of us? The practice of lament is something I have found beneficial as I work to allow myself to feel these emotions and to feel them with God. I've made a point of writing a a letter of lament once a month about the things that I experienced throughout the month that upset me or made me sad or things and losses that I had to grieve. Through intentionally lamenting, we learn to intentionally bring our struggles and heartaches to God. Journaling is another practice that is beneficial as we go through seasons of challenge in life. Every day, if you can take just a few minutes to write down uh, one way that you saw God in that day, whether it was someone you interacted with, something you did, or something someone said to you, or even something you saw out in creation, You will create a book of reminders of God's faithfulness to you that you can look back on for when it's really hard to see how God is good and faithful. As we learn to lament with God, 
trusting that he can handle the emotions, we strengthen our relationship with him so we come out of the storms stronger than we were before in both faith and character. One of the most profound experiences I have had while grieving with God was when I was in BC two years ago. I was on a trip and was having a conversation with a mentor and had voiced confusion as to why God felt so far away in a particularly painful situation from a couple years prior. My mentor asked me to put myself back in the place where I had received the bad news. He then asked me, if Jesus was in the room, where would he be? What would he be doing? What would he look like? What would his facial expression be? What is his body language? Is he saying anything? As I pictured Jesus in this painful moment with me, I realized I was not alone. Jesus had been, me, been with me the entire time and he was sad too. My mentor then asked me if I could ask Jesus a question, what would it be? Through this process, I was able to grieve with God and realized that he wasn't against me or passively watching this painful situation happen to me, but rather he was in the middle of it all and actively involved in supporting me and carrying me through in a variety of ways that even if I didn't recognize them at the time, he was present. Where does Jesus want to grieve with you today? While lament psalms are expressions from people to God, one of the primary purposes of them is to experience God's characteristic of comfort. God intends to meet us where we are at as we lament. Where does God want to meet you personally today? Maybe you're a soon-to-be college student who didn't get into your dream program, or a young adult longing for a life partner, or a young family wrestling with infertility or a miscarriage or maybe you're a couple navigating separation. Maybe your heart's aching over a friendship that is strained and struggling to be repaired, or there's a medical diagnosis that's rocked your world, or a medical condition that continues to make your daily life challenging. Or maybe you lost your job and you face an uncertain future, or you lost a loved one and you carry the emptiness that's left behind. Maybe today you're the person whose plans and expectations changed, the person who has had to move away from a place you love or a place you've been for a really long time. Maybe you're the parents whose kid moved away or the parents who have become empty nesters. Or maybe you're the person who's experiencing family complications and broken relationships. Or the person who feels like everything just keeps going wrong and you can't catch a break. Or maybe you feel simply forgotten by God in a variety of ways in your life. Wherever you find yourself this morning, I pray that you would know our Father's deep love for you and his desire to be with you in all moments of life. Would you allow yourself to feel the hard emotions, but even more, enter into this spiritual practice of lament, allowing yourself to feel them with your loving comforter and provider. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the gift of your love and your comfort and your presence. Thank you that you invite us in to grieve with you, that you want to be a part of our lives in both the good but also the challenging. I ask that you would make your presence known to every person in the room and that they would be able to see how you are working through the painful things in their lives, and that they would know that you are present and that above all else, you love them. May we continue to seek you always. In Jesus' name, amen.